All right, good afternoon. Um, oh, we have somebody else. Seats are filling up fast. All right, good afternoon. I wanted to first to give you an update on cases of sexual exploitation and abuse in the UN system, and this is in line with the Secretary General's initiative on increasing transparency on all these allegations. From October 1st to December 31st of 2017, we have received 40 allegations for all new UN entities and implementing partners. Not all allegations have been fully verified, and many are in the, fairly, uh, in the preliminary assess assessment phase. Out of the 40 allegations, 15 are reported from peacekeeping operations. These 15 are not new allegations, but they've all been uploaded on the conduct and discipline database as they have come in, and there are, that is a publicly available website. The remaining 25 allegations are reported from agencies, funds, and programs, and include eight allegations relating to implementing partners. Of the 40 allegations, 13 are categorized as sexual abuse, 24 sexual exploitation, and three are of unknown nature. <clears throat> the 40 allegations involve 54 victims, 30 of which are women, 16 are girls under the age of 18, and the ages of eight, of eight others are unknown. 12 of those 40 allegations occurred in 2017, seven in 2016, and three in 2014 or prior, and the dates are unknown for 18 of them. With regard of the status of the 40 allegations, two have been substantiated by an investigation, three are not substantiated, 15 are at various stages of investigation, and 18 are under preliminary assessment, two are under review with limited information provided to the investigating entity. With over 95,000 civilians and 90,000 uniformed personnel working for the United Nations around the world, sexual exploitation and abuse are not reflective of the conduct of the majority of the dedicated men and women who serve people around the world. But, this, uh, but every allegation involving our personnel undermines our values and principles and the sacrifices of those who serve with pride and professionalism in some of the most dangerous places in the world. For this re reason, combating this scourge and helping the em empowering those who have been scarred by these egregious acts continues to be a key priority for the Secretary General in 2018. And just a few minutes ago, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lowcock, uh, briefed the Security Council in an open meeting on the humanitarian situation in Syria, and he warned, warned about the ongoing violence in eastern Ghouta. He told the Council that eastern Ghouta is a predictable and preventable humanitarian disaster unfolding before our very eyes, with 400,000 people have been besieged there for four years. He said that at least 346 people have been killed and more than 900 wounded since the beginning of the month. Uh, at this same time, humanitarian workers have faced greater difficulties in gaining access to people in need than in any other time since 2015. <clears throat> Also on Syria, Staffan Di Mistor, the Special Envoy for Syria, said ahead of today's Security Council meeting that we urgently need a ceasefire in the country. He reiterated that humanitarian situation for the civilians in eastern Ghouta is appalling, and therefore we need a ceasefire that stops both the horrific bombardment of eastern Ghouta and the indiscriminate mortar shelling on Damascus. He added that the ceasefire needs to be followed by immediate and unhindered humanitarian access and a facilitated evacuation of medical cases out of eastern Ghouta. The special envoy called on the Astana guarantors to hold urgent meeting to reinstall the de-escalation. Uh, UN humanitarian convoys are on standby and ready to deliver humanitarian aid and allow for medical evacuations. And today, the UN assistance mission in Afghanistan welcomed the entry into force of the country's new penal code, calling it a milestone in the criminal justice reform. The mission said that with this development, Afghanistan has for the first time a criminal code that complies with international treaty obligations in criminal justice and incorporates modern best practices in criminology. More information on the mission's website. And the uh, <coughs> uh, Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Ursula Mueller, today wrapped up her visit to the Central African Republic. She called on the international community to urgently support the life-saving humanitarian response in the country where the number of internally displaced people 
has nearly doubled over the last year to reach 694,000. Ms. Mueller said the protection of people displaced by violence and insecurity will be central to the humanitarian response in 2018. She also stressed the need to protect humanitarian workers. The Central African Republic is among the most dangerous country for aid workers to operate. In 2017, 14 humanitarian workers lost their lives compared to 2016. And a new report from our colleagues in South Sudan said that genuine reconciliation and lasting peace will only be achieved in the country if people are free and safe to express their opinion, regardless of their ethnic or political affiliation. The report warns that undue restriction on freedom of expression are having a chilling effect and a further shrinking of the space of debate and dissent in South Sudan, while hate speech continues to cause mistrust, fear, and violence. Co-authored by the UN Mission in the Country and the UN Human Rights Office, the report identified 60 verified incidents which violate the legitimate right of freedom of expression of 102 victims, including 17 women, in the period of July 2016 to December 2017. Incidents include the killings of two people, arbitrary arrest and detention of 58 others, and 16 people dismissed from their job, the closure of suspension of three media houses, censorship of newspaper articles, and the blocking of websites. And our colleagues at UNHCR are calling for calm and restraint after worrying reports of refugee protests <coughs> turning violent in Rwanda's Kiziba refugee camp. The camp hosts over 17,000 people from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, around 70% of whom are children and women. Protesting refugees were reportedly angry about reduction in food assistance. Humanitarian operations in Rwanda remain severely underfunded, forcing the World Food Program to cut food rations by 10% in November 2017 and by 25% in 2018. To date, UNHCR's 2018 appeal for $98.8 million to support refugees in Rwanda is only 2% funded. And speaking of the World Food Program, our colleagues there said today that they have provided vital food assistance to nearly 3,000 displaced people stranded in the harsh Libyan desert as they struggle to return to their hometown of uh, Tawarga in western Libya. Many displaced Tawargan families have been trying to go home, but early, early February, armed groups blocked returnees from entering the town despite an agreement promising safe returns. Large numbers are now stranded in makeshift shelters in the desert, while others have found temporary, temporary refuge with host families in nearby areas. And I just want to echo a statement that our colleagues at UNICEF have just issued. Uh, the statement reads that the executive director of UNICEF, Henrietta Four, today accepted Justin Forsyth's resignation from his position as deputy executive director of the organization. Uh, Ms. Four said she is grateful for Mr. Forsyth for his work over the past two years to advocate for the most vulnerable children and help advance UNICEF's mission to save children's lives. This mission is now more important than ever. If you have any questions, please talk to UNICEF. And today we say thank you to Equatorial, uh, excuse me, Equatorial Guinea and Serbia, both of which have paid their full regular budget dues for this year. And the honor roll is now at 59. Evelyn. Thank you, Steph. Um, on the first item mm -hmm. that you Read on and I, I will add, we will uh, give you a handout with all those numbers. Cause right, I very good. It's been not all copy <coughs> from me. Um, how are the victims going to be helped and the perpetrators punished? Are there any details on that? Because well, that's the question that people would ask. You know, uh, the, the Secretary General has made it a priority to ensure uh, that those people who've come forward receive as much assistance they can from various parts uh, of the UN system. Obviously, uh, keeping the, peop the, the perpetrators to account uh, is critical, whether they be uh, civilian staff, uniform personnel, or police, uh, or police, and there are uh, there are different paths uh, to that. But it's important that these uh, these cases be investigated, and that's uh, where we are on on a number of these uh, on a number of these. Same Who topic. Investigates and Sorry. Daddy, beg your pardon? Well, initially the investigations are done uh, by the agencies <laughs> concerned, and if they if if need be, they are they are referred to uh, the appropriate. Uh, authorities for criminal prosecution. 
Yes, sir. In, in light of this, uh, Justin Forsyth, uh, announcement. You, you were asked yesterday. You said, you know, ask save the children. But apparently, someone at least, maybe Ms. Four, took it uh, in a different direction. But I wanted to ask you about Frank Larue. I know it was announced more than a month ago that at UNESCO he was suspended and removed from mm -hmm. his job, and it was. And I've heard now from UNESCO, and, and I, maybe it's, maybe it's wrong, and you can disabuse me that he's still being paid. Um, that he's, uh, which I guess you could say, well, it's a suspension with pay but that actually he's near retirement and that the goal is actually to just simply never actually issue any findings at all. Uh, and I wanted to I know, think, what is the status of Mr. LaRue? I think that's a question for UNICEF, which, uh, well, it is a question for UNICEF. They're a specialized agency. They have their processes. I think uh, uh, the, the head of UNICEF, Director General, has been very forthcoming. She's taken the steps that she needed to be, but I'm, I'm, not, quali Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm not qualified to speak of the intricacies uh, of the, uh, the investigative processes going on at UNESCO. Right, but okay. I guess what I'm saying is if you just use the podium here to say, you know, look at, look at what the system is doing, and it does, does Antonio Guterres, as Secretary General, does he believe that people that are credibly enough charged with sexual harassment that they're suspended from their jobs, should they still be getting paid and riding I, into I think, retirement I think, with no fines? Uh, first of all, I'm not assuming the okay. assumptions that you have about whether or not he's riding into retirement, I, I don't know. That's a question uh, to address to, to UNICEF. What is important is that every allegation of sexual harassment be investigated. Whether or not uh, during the investigations people are put on leave with pay or without pay uh, depends on, on the case, and it is obviously a decision to be taken uh, by the agency uh, the agency concerned. Is the Lewis Lewis case going to be re-examined, re given the issues that have ra been raised by people? Uh, Which is the Lewis Lewis? Lu Louise Lewis in yeah. UNAIDS. He was yeah. cleared <clears throat> with the alleged involvement of the executive director, Mr. Sibide, as both a witness in the case and as the ultimate decision maker. Uh, I think we've, I've, I've talked about this case. Uh, the investigation happened. Mr. Sibide recused himself. If there's anything more to announce from uh, from that end, I will uh, do so. And let I me let me let's let's sure. Maldives. Let's us you and I take a break for a second and uh, yeah. We'll regarding back. Maldives, yesterday there was a statement that uh, the president of Maldives, Yamin, had uh, refused uh, UN uh, mediation. Today, one of his ministers, uh, Shaimin, uh, said that or tweeted that uh, he hadn't uh, refused uh, he, that he welcomed the. UN intervention and that uh, the president had in fact asked for UN to be involved in talks with the opposition. So is it uh, a fact that you received any requests from the Maldivian president for I, involvement? I, I can only speak uh, for, for ourselves, for the Secretary General. Uh, obviously, we are all following the situation in Maldives with concern. The Secretary General, in a conversation with the President, offered uh, UN mediation, but the President conveyed that mediation was not wanted at this stage. So that's, I, as I said, I can only speak for half of the phone call, and I can only speak for our half. Masood. Thank you. Yeah, Stefan, uh, two questions. One is about uh, this uh, uh, Iran nuclear deal, which, according to all United Nations, I mean, uh, uh, monitors and so forth, is going well as far as Iran is concerned. It's abiding by its the treaty. However, Iran has expressed dissatisfaction on the part of its other uh, principles who are not abiding by it and are uh, hindering its uh, transactions in the international arena. Do you have any? Comment on that. Uh, I think the the the, the, the Secretary General's position on the JCPOA has been very made very clear. He's, he believes that this is a, a landmark, uh, a critical diplomatic achievement over the last years, and that all the parties uh, to um, to it should do whatever they can to preserve it. The UN has a certain responsibility, which uh, through the IAEA and the Secretary General's reporting, which we, we do as, as mandated, but as you know, we were not a party uh, itself to the, to the agreement, but we think that all the parties who were should do whatever they can to preserve it and uphold their responsibilities within uh, the agreement. Yes, and also, uh, do you have any update on Syria's Gauta uh, situation where people are being killed right uh, there. Mr. Lokok, the, the emergency relief coordinator, just gave an extensive briefing to the Security Council and will circulate the text. Uh, I'll come back to you. Matthew. 
Sure. Uh, actually, uh, fo one follow-up on, on the Maldives, because it, it, it's a very specific statement by this Mohammed Shaini, the Minister of Fisheries and Agriculture. He says, you know, the President himself has made the request for assistance, and this is the part I want to ask you about. He says, the opposition keeps blocking. So you said you can only read out your portion of, of these calls. Has the Secretary General spoken with anyone in the opposition? I'm not aware the Secretary General has spoken to anyone in the opposition. Okay, and I wanted to ask you quickly about a, a thing in North Korea. I learned yesterday and published the documents of a waiver sought by the UN uh, uh, system, the Re UN Resident Coordinator, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Uh, sure. Tapan Mishra. Yeah, Tapan Mishra, yeah. Yes, uh, to, uh, to use a little, uh, some say little known, but in any case, not a prominent Russian bank as a correspondent bank to send four million euros into North Korea mm -hmm. uh, in December. And I wanted to know, first of all, how was the bank, there's a document that's, that's part of the request that shows that the, the Russian bank acknowledges that an unauthorized person even negotiated the correspondent banking relationship. How does the UN system choose which correspondent bank to use? And is this common, is, is this, it seemed like they, they presented this as an emergency for third quarter disbursements of four million euros yeah, I mean, into I, North listen, Korea. I, I don't know the details of, uh, of, of, of the, the, the agreement. What I do know, uh, is that the UN uh, operates as humanitarian presence uh, and has a presence in, in Pyongyang. Uh, we abide, and the, the DPRK, as you know, is under very strict uh, sanctions from the Security Council, which include uh, issues of the banking sector. We do need to get uh, money to pay uh, to pay staff and to, to run to run our programs. I think it's only normal that we go through the sanctions committee uh, to uh, to get the, the the waivers. We don't want to be obviously the secretariat doesn't want to be in violation of uh, of Security Council uh, resolutions. To say that uh, dealing with the banking sector. Uh, in terms of banks that are willing to do business uh, legitimately in the DPRK is, is challenging, would probably be uh, an understatement. Uh, but whatever rules they are, I have no doubt that they were followed. So a simple question, is this, is this put out, is, it, is there a procurement for this? I'm asking you because there's some questions about how the bank was selected, and even from the, their own documents acknowledge uh, I, said, I, said, I don't have any so further like details. I can I can look can you, look into it, but I know we are uh, working in a very challenging environment and trying to uh, follow the rules and regulations to the T. Yes, sir, and then we'll go. Yeah. Just a follow up on Maldives. Uh, could you please tell me when the phone call between uh, the Secretary General and the President took place? And B, uh, just for the record, there was no uh, formal request from the President of Maldives for UN uh, participation. I, I, if I recall, the phone call took place Friday last. Okay. Um, I can only share with you what I'm able to share with you, uh, which is what I've, you know, which is what I've read oh, already a number of uh, uh, a, a number of times that the Secretary General offered the United Nations uh, mediation, but the President conveyed that mediation uh, was not wanted at this stage. Iftikhar. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I know it's a domestic matter, but still, uh, does the Secretary General has any thoughts on the growing student movement within the United States for end of gun violence? Okay. I think anyone uh, who has watched uh, these young people over the last few days advocate for their position uh, cannot help but be moved uh, by the power and the engagement uh, and the passion of youth. Sir. Yeah. yeah. That Thank will be you, yes. Oh, Masuji. I just wanted to uh, say, is there an update that you have latest on Yemen? Because it's the same situation, children are dying, mm -hmm. no aid no, is coming. I have coming. no, I mean, we've, you know, we brief regularly on humanitarian updates on Yemen, which are, always, I would say, uh, tragic, but I haven't had anything in the last, uh, in, in the last few days. Sure. I'm going to ask you again about Tanzania and then about Guinea, but in, you'd said yesterday um, that you had no language. Do you, is that looking down? I do have, uh, ah, I do have something language for you on, uh, Language has emerged on uh, Tanzania. Um, and I can tell you that we're following closely developments in Tanzania, including the sad news of recent deaths of a local leader in Chadema, the main Tanzania opposition party, and of a university student 
who was traveling in a bus nearby a march uh, by members of the Chadema as they were being dispersed by the police. First, we would like to express our condolences to the family of the deceased and call on authorities to respect freedom of expression and the right of peaceful assembly. Okay. No, thanks okay. a lot. I wanted to also, is, there's, I th maybe I, I misheard him. I think I've heard the Secretary General say that Guinea is, was, one, was one of the successes uh, of the UN system. And I'm not saying that it isn't, but I do want to ask, there's a, a government minister of sports, uh, Mr. Bantama Sao, who's been on video urging party, majority party members to seek revenge and essentially kill opponents. And I'm just wondering, is either of the, the I, UN I haven't, envoy? I haven't seen uh, that report. Let me see what I can find okay. out. Masood, and then we'll leave it yes. to Brendan. Uh, uh, yes, sir, but I asked this question earlier uh, about the situation in Egypt where the journalists are being arrested and Mr. Sisi seems to be incarcerating all his opposition closely mm -hmm. and he wants to win this election by arresting his uh, so-called civil society. Do you have anything to say about the rest? I mean, of I, I've, you know, I think you've, you've asked this question in the past and I've answered it and uh, our position is unchanged. Was but what about the journalists? And I, as I said, we've, we've referred to, we've, I've, I've answered that question to you and you can refer to the language I use, which is uh, the same and... Uh, Thank you, I just, I remembered this one. Was there a meeting uh, yesterday evening of the Secretary General and the permanent representative of Iran? There was a tweeted photograph, and I went up there for the Cote d'Ivoire one, and the timing was different. Are you I aware don't know. of Let that? Let me see. I'm not off the top of my head. Thank you.